Welcome to the Young Pro Show. I'm Matthew Britt, and today I have with me a special guest, Kellen Hanna. And Kellen works with Shopify, who uh, the Young Pros have done a little bit of business with already. We started a build a business competition with Shopify this year. Been an incredible success so far. 12 businesses started, and we wanted to bring Kellen on to share a little bit about his story, uh, his experience working in the health and fitness industry, his experience working with uh, this multi billion dollar brand called Shopify, and uh, having incredible success as uh, a, an also a home business owner. Uh, so, with Kellen's life, he's got all these different things going on, and we want to tap his brain and get a little bit of knowledge together here for our viewers. So, Kellen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome to have you here. Why don't yeah. you share a little bit with everybody kind of some of your experience so far to date on uh, all the different things you've been doing from Shopify to fitness to home-based business, etc. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'd love to. So, I would say um, the large part of where I am now started about four years ago when I met... Um, Ben Johnson. Yeah. Um, I met him through a friend of a friend from college, and they called me up one day, and we started talking about this home-based business, and it sounded really interesting. And what perked my interest the most about it is this whole philosophy of like what you put into the universe, you kind of get back. I was working as a car salesman and not loving it, um, long hours. And you don't really get to use a lot of your talents. It's, yeah. it's the same algorithmic kind of, um, you know, welcome the person in, show them a car, try to get a deal, and, you know, try not to get mad at the person because they want every nickel and dime out of the deal, right? Yeah. So, um, so I started looking for a job, and then Ben and Andrew called me out of the blue. And we started talking about having my own business and it just kind of started making sense. I'm like, yeah, I do want to be my own boss. And I knew I always wanted to work from the beach, use my phone, maybe my laptop, and, and that be about the extent of the tools that I needed. Yeah. And I knew it was possible. So uh, later on that week, we met up. Uh, I think it was a Sunday. We went to grab some food at a really good diner and um, that was kind of it. I, I saw the, the passion they had for their businesses. I saw how successful they were. I saw that they weren't overnight celebrities mm -hmm. and I knew that that was something that I wanted to do. So um, I started and that was really the catalyst that brought me to basically kind of where I am now. So that, that kind of opened your eyes to something you hadn't really seen before. Yeah, totally. I mean, I I came from a more of a traditional kind of business background. My parents owned uh, coffee shops and a tea and a bookstore and a bakery. So I was there for retail businesses and traditional businesses and, you know, one hour of time equals one increment of, of profit or money. So this whole new idea of, you know, multiplying my time and, and potential profits seemed really cool to me. So you... Your parents had a couple different businesses, so, so yeah. you were already exposed to entrepreneurship from a young age. Yeah, and I didn't really know it. I just, you're just kind of thrown into it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. So when it kind of came around to you, you're like, oh yeah, I've already kind of seen this before. Yeah. yeah. And it helped. Do you think that is what kind of gave you the open-mindedness in the first place to to allow Ben and Andrew to share something with you that you hadn't heard of before? Yeah, totally, totally. I... Um, coming from that background with my family and watching them adapt and be open to many different fluxes and changes in their business, I guess that would have made me more open to um, to something like that for yeah. sure. For sure. So after you started being an entrepreneur with your own home based business, yeah. what are some of the major things that you learned? You know, from going where you're working for someone else, mm -hmm. selling cars, mm -hmm. kind of doing something almost like monotony mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. What were some of the major things that you had to adapt to when you became your own boss? Just that exactly, being your own boss, holding yourself accountable. That was, um, that was big, that was a big one for me because now you're, you're, you're sitting alone with yourself, potentially with teammates, and you're like, okay, what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. Right, like you now have to plan out your day. You now have to figure out like how do I get people in the door? How do I talk to people? So 
the biggest challenges were like how do I um, attract people? How do I um, set up this business? And I immediately, you know, from my father, from a young age, teaching me to read books. That was a big part of it. Okay. Um, so being around Ben and Andrew and shortly after meeting you, I saw that personal development was a huge part of that. So I think one of the first books that I kind of re-picked up was one by Jim Rohn. Um, I forget the name of it, but yeah. I think it's Seasons of Life. I feel. Seasons of Life, yeah. I think that was one it, or what was it, or uh, something about change. Anyways, so that was it. He's a great, great author and, and motivational speaker and business uh, philosopher all around. So that, that really helped kickstart it. And what that made me realize is a lot of it comes from me. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. leading yourself, like getting up when you say you're going to get up, working for an hour that day. If all you want to do is work for an hour that day, you work for an hour that day and kind of going that way about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got in back into the personal development on a whole other yeah. level. Yeah. And from there, I know you have now, you know, really set the habits in place for yourself. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell everybody kind of what your you know, what, you, what your morning is like, how do you set your days up properly? Sure. What do you do in order to make sure that you get the things done that you want to get done when it comes to not only your business, mm -hmm. but your your job with Shopify mm -hmm. and your health and, and mm -hmm. those commitments and mm -hmm. also making time for your family and friends and the things you you, know, you do there. For sure, for sure. So um, kind of my like my ideal morning and, and the way I plan it to go most days it's, it's this kind of 20-20-20 rule that Robin Sharma speaks about where in the morning it's 20 minutes on education. So I'll try to read um, some type of book, whether it's personal development or, or autobiography or an audio book. Um, 20 minutes could be ex extended to maybe an hour if I go to yoga or if I go to the gym, but it's definitely to move my body. Um, even if I'm at home, I'll do stretching and, you know, shoulder rotation, something basic. Mm -hmm. And then the last 20 minutes will usually be spent in um, some type of self-reflection, uh, mindfulness, uh, meditation. Awesome. And then from that, um, that's really got me a really good kickstart on the day. Um, I'm thinking about my day by then uh, in a way of how I really want to you know, go after it. So uh, I have a work journal, a workbook, and I'll go through the day and maybe day and a bit before and recap what I've done, plan out what I'm going to do so that as soon as I get to work, I'm in the mode of working. Uh, I'm not trying to go through emails. I'll almost never do emails in the morning. I usually do them in the second half of the day. In the first part of the morning is when I really try to use my my full will and creativity. Um, so that's I love it. working on pet projects, um, reaching out to people that I've found hard to get contact with, um, just using different parts of my brain really to to yeah to go about my day in the way that I want, so that I'm not reacting to it. I'm being proactive. I love it. Yeah. So you set yourself up from the time you open your eyeballs, you kind of have a, a, a routine, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. And then when it comes time for you to get into work, yeah. you're, you're set up so you can be the most productive possible, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've tried, you know, working up, wor waking up on days that I want to work out or like want to be more productive, but it doesn't work. You have, to, I found you have to do it habitually the same day, same time each day. And it's funny, then it's easier to do it than not to do it once you've yeah. done it long enough. Yeah. Right? Like whether it's, it's, a, it's a month for you or, you know, 60 days or, or two weeks, like whatever it is, like once it's there, like now I wake up naturally, like really. Once it's a habit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you'd say that building habits around, yeah. around your goals and around what you want your life to look like is pretty essential? Yeah, definitely. Habits for sure. Habits, habits, habits. Um, that morning routine is a habit. Um, when I come to work is generally a habit. It's always within the same like 20 minutes. Um, what I do in the morning, where I go to work, I get into my space, you know, that same kind of routine that some athletes have where they tie the shoes the same way, mm -hmm. they wear the same socks. I make sure that I'm at 
uh, one of two desks, whether it's a standing desk or my sitting desk at really the same time every day. I put on the same kind of playlist where I'm not really listening to it, but getting in the mode. So yeah, habits for sure. How have you found for yourself, how have you been able to build the habits that you wanted? Yeah, yeah. Um, one at a time. One at a time. Yeah, I tried to think that I can multitask and yeah. do it all at the same time, but it didn't work that way. So what I really did was, first, I've always kind of been into fitness and exercising and, you know, I've, I've, I have my black belt in karate. So the fitness aspect of it for me wasn't the hardest. Um, it was more of the morning ritual. So I started getting up at the same time and doing the same things in the morning, right? Where it's move your body, meditation, read. Um, at first I could, couldn't read a couple of pages without kind of dozing off again, right? Yeah. Like, and then waking up and rereading it. So then I started measuring my time about how long I was reading. And now I can easily read for an hour before I, you know, get not bored, but like maybe lose interest. So yeah. that's gone from a few pages to an hour within, you know, a year or two. So that that's a big one. Um, so I think just measuring it, taking one thing first and then going forward with that. I like what you're saying about building them one at a time. Yeah. It Because it can be very overwhelming, right? Is Especially totally. as we... As we dive into personal development yeah. and we start learning about how many how many potential things there are to be able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's really that it's not about doing, you know, fifty things every day yeah. to set yourself up for success. It's yeah. about a few, you know, like half a dozen things. Yeah. Right? And totally. if you do those half a dozen things well, you can have the things that you want. Totally. And and stacking them, right? Yeah. Getting one down, then getting the next down, yeah. then getting the next down. Yeah. And you don't have to overwhelm yourself and no. do 50 things. No, no. Right? Yeah. It becomes a this kind of beautiful momentum that you get. Yeah. Right? When you're waking up. And like, even if you wake up at the same time each day and you don't feel like reading or exercising, then you're like, okay, well, I'm awake. What else am I going to do? Yeah. Right? So you start doing these little extra things. Yeah. Very cool. So now that you've been, uh, you know, you've had some of your own home-based business experience and success there, then you made a transition back into uh, working at a, at a company again. Yeah. And that company is now a multi-billion dollar brand. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what that's been like, like working for this very successful public yeah. company that's doing incredible things for the world of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. What's that been like for you? Um, it's been fantastic. It has definitely added a whole new level of skill and professionalism to myself. Um, you know, it's really brought out my passion for, uh, for, I always knew I wanted to help people in some way, you know, with my parents' businesses, we were, you know, providing good food and good um, products. So I've boiled that down more to wanting to help entrepreneurs. I, I love helping other people be better at what they're doing, right? So coming to Shopify has um, really helped me hone in on that. Yeah. Um, I started off in Guru Land, okay. being in support, um, you know, helping small, medium businesses just get up and running, you know, cross the chasm a little bit from a traditional form of business to a more online technology based business. And then from that, I went into um, events and conferences and kind of being the face of Shopify and, and representing ourselves that way. And now I'm on the team where I um, help VIPs, where even they are entrepreneurs that still need help, right? Um, as an example, a lot of musicians still think selling their music through iTunes is the only way to do it, right? But now they can distribute their own music themselves on their own website and they don't need any special um, you know, signatures. They can cut through red tape and, and do it all on themselves. So I love that whole aspect of empowering people to do it. Um, for, for going through it with a public company and and seeing the changes that have come along with it, it's it's definitely um, a place 
where you know you you want to be at your best, right? Yeah. Like you show up and you're around all this other talent and independently you could have been really good on your own. Um, you know, I, I love being a lone wolf and working hard and putting my nose to the stone. But then when you come into a room when you're around a hundred other people that are phenomenal at what they do, you're like, oh cow, okay, I got to step up and, yeah. and I got to work with these people and I got to bring what I have to bring. To, to do work. It's almost forced you to level up. It forces you, definitely. I mean, you're all trying trying to pull each other faster towards where we're going. Yeah. Right? It's 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 a great pace we have here. Um, we move faster than anyone else I know. And um, we love doing things differently. Yeah. Right? Not sticking to traditional rules. We went public. We went public faster than most other companies have ever gone public. Wow. Yeah. From... That's really impressive from, uh, you know, you guys are a big company now mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as a big company, they often do move slower, Yeah. but I've seen it just from, you know, my experience and our friendship together and just the amount of times I've been around Shopify now, I've seen how fast they're moving and it's, it yeah. really is remarkable yeah. uh, to see what they're able to do. Uh, from, a from your own personal growth perspective, what has Shopify done for you in that aspect? Yeah, like because it's like you said, it's forced you to level up. But mm -hmm. like, give us give us a little bit of insight that people can relate to on uh, what Shopify has done for you. Yeah, um, books again. We yeah. have a library here where you can borrow and and take books um, all about creativity and um, you know communication styles and conversations and um, designing your life. Right, it's. Kind of a big broad term but the there I forget the really good book that it is it's it's um, talks about just figuring out a way to design what you're doing right like the same way that we sit down and um, plan out a vacation a lot of what I've learned at Shopify is figuring out and planning what you want to do yeah. here right not just here at Shopify but in general we are um, push towards having our own businesses, running them part-time on the side, being a weekend warrior, nice. right? Having a side hustle. So uh, our personal growth has been practicing what you preach yeah. um, and doing it yourselves and experimenting and getting shit wrong. You made a, you made a good point there about uh, designing your life. Mm -hmm. People spend more time designing their vacations yeah. than they do spend designing their life. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it would be very wise for everybody watching today to take that to heart and you know really spend some time mm -hmm. designing their life. So uh, last couple things here, Kellen, before we uh, end this interview, we, uh, we always ask people, who do they believe should be on the show? Who mm -hmm. should we get onto the Young Pro Show that can add some value to our youth? Yeah, uh, I would say really anyone that is starting maybe to figure it out, whatever that may be. Do you have a name of a person? Um, who should definitely be on yeah, the show? Yeah, who do we need to get? Um, you definitely need to get Thea Earl on the show. Thea, all right. She also works at Shopify. Mm -hmm. She's killing it in business development, and she has a fantastic story from where she came from. So I okay. won't spoil that. Okay. Um, we could definitely need to get some other professionals on here. Um, Thinking off the top of my head, maybe Harley, our CEO, could be here. COO okay. could be okay. here. Um, even people that have just started practicing their craft, right, that are a couple of years into it, I think have valuable um, insight into what they're doing. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to having uh, both of those people uh, on the show. We'll get Thea and Harley here. And uh, in the meantime, Kellen, thank you so much for coming on today. It was awesome to have you on board. Yeah. And I uh, look forward to uh, getting this out to the public. Remember to like us on uh, Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and uh, follow us on Instagram.